So I'm here to talk about uh, the Max for Live product. Uh, it's something, it's my current obsession. Uh, as David mentioned, I'm responsible for the, for the schedule of the product. But I'm also kind of heading up, uh, along with Manuel, uh, the process of putting together content that's going to ship uh, with, with the product. From the standpoint of the developer, um, making plugins work with the five bazillion hosts that support plugins is one of the worst development tasks in the world. It's just horrifying. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to work with a company that would allow us kind of a more complete integration kind of cut that round trip uh, effect so that there was a lot more dynamic uh, relationship. So that patching in Max in this environment would have the same kind of visceral feel as patching Max uh, in, the, in the Max environment. Uh, hence Ableton Live and the new Max for Life product. This is an example of just uh, a step sequencer that we built. It's one of what we call the big three modules. Uh, the big three are like three fairly uh, intense max patches that were developed to uh, show off sort of the high end of the software. It kind of is uh, an extension of my long history with step sequencing. Um, I, when I first started using, using max, uh, I actually bought it because I was on the quest for the ultimate step sequencer. The step sequencer is a, a, a simple or a seemingly simple sequence, but it's also, uh, in fact, a Max patch. So if I click on the Edit button, you'll see that it launches a version of Max. Uh, here's, here's the, you'll, you'll notice that the entire UI, as well as uh, the, preset, the preset that's currently active, comes up in the editor. The editor is actually live, and, but it's also a Max patch, and it's a Max patch that I can actively edit while uh, live itself is running. So you'll see that the sequence is running and I can actually, uh, either in presentation or patching mode, I can, uh, I can perform all my functions like doing randomization, setting, uh, setting values. Here's a little device that I created that sort of shows off all the, all the objects that are new to Max that are specific to the Max for Live environment. So over on the left here, we have a bunch of objects that are going to be really familiar to live users. Uh, dials with, with labels and uh, values already displayed. Sliders with about the same. Something called live gain, which is a combination of volume control and uh, view meters. We have uh, selectable tabs, we have number boxes, menus, toggle switches of different types, and even uh, a a button object that bangs in a live sort of a way. Uh, we also created some objects very specifically for those big three devices. One of them is obviously the step sequencer. You have uh, access to this object so that in your quest for the ultimate step sequencer you'll have kind of a jump start. Uh, we have something called uh, live.grid, which gives you uh, either a drum type or a uh, almost like a multi-slider type interface to, uh, uh, to st steps. You have multiple way arrows, which uh, you can have as many or as few directional arrows as you like. We also have this set on the far right, we have a set of objects that are what we call the live API objects. They allow us as Max programmers to actively interrogate and manipulate the live environment. Um, something that I expect Ableton is going to come to regret horribly. Um, here's a, typically what you get when you first instantiate a, uh, uh, one of the Max devices is you get a very simple interface basically saying Here's my input, here's my output. I'll start off with them connected, but it's up to you to do something from there. Uh, it, uh, as a Max developer in the live environment, uh, I've gotten very used to seeing this several times a day. It's, uh, it will become your best friend. Now I've preloaded this with a, little, uh, a few extra pieces because I get in front of a crowd this big and I get kind of nervous, but you'll get a chance to see, uh, uh, you'll get a chance to see how interactive this sort of uh, development is in comparison to really anything else. So you notice that when I open up the editor, it, it sort of deads out 
the, uh, the device that's in live. That's kind of a visual indicator for us that says that's not what's active anymore. What's active is the patch that you've now opened. We have this amp up here. This area is now the active uh, effect or the active device in this device chain. And what you'll notice is that as I work, you'll hear the sound change, but you'll also, the other important thing to realize is that you also hear it in the context of the other devices that are in the effects chain. It's why I put the EQ and the reverb on here, not only because I like the sound, but also because I want you to see that this is active in the device chain the entire time that you're working. So as I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just basically take, uh, take these couple of objects, insert them in, You'll hear the sound change as I add objects, and uh, hopefully, if I'm a lucky guy. So I'm going to first. I'm going to start off by uh, by removing uh, by removing the patch cords. Our, our sound obviously stops because our input's no longer connected to our output. I'm going to take this degrade object and uh, just put a pair of them out there. Uh, connect up the pieces. And now basically we have a, a sort of degraded version of that same pad. Now obviously I'm going to want to control this in some way, so I'm going to hook up my uh, these preset dials. And basically all I did was I preset the ranges on them. I'll show you what what that looks like. And so now if I uh, if I save this file, you see also that it immediately updates the device display basically taking that patch and rolling it back down into the device view. And you can imagine, uh, one, of, one of the first ideas that was tossed around was, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could just like literally patch inside there? But you can imagine how difficult it would be like, you know, building a submarine through the porthole if you had to actually patch in the device area. So uh, being able to, to go in and out of, the, uh, of an actual Max environment uh, but still have all the access to the to the audio MIDI data controller data that's coming from live is very is really significant.